It is. You know, I, I'll be Some late to my own be. funeral. I know that. That's for sure. I I wasn't even gonna go. <laughs> mm. I hope you won't go. Oh, hope you'll be, be dead. Be <laughs> yeah, I'm already gone. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Bad sporting action. Just kidding. <laughs> Takers, I'm gonna be ca- go right now. Tweet just... at us. <laughs> just tweet Poor at us. Beer. Who do you think is going to die first out of all three of us? That's messed up. <laughs> the Deadpool. Way to start the show. The Deadpool. Captain like Deadpool. Cool. <laughs> My, tip hopefully off. it's a while before that's other. resolved. <laughs> yeah, it probably will. Get back to us. We'll be the next thing besides Twitter. Be something else. Um. But what will happen first? Bruins winning the Stanley Cup or Celtics win the NBA Finals? Draw. Who's so hot right now? Bruins better win it this year. It's such a failure if they don't. Oh, they're all in? Mm -hmm. It's so much easier to blow it as the one seed in hockey than it is a top seed in basketball. So I'm going Celtics. Mm -hmm. I go Bruins. If anybody... I'm going Bruins too, but if anybody's an expert on blowing anything, it's Ryan. I was going to say, Mac. Welcome to Just the Tip, a fantasy football podcast with your tippers, Mac. Just so these are just our tips, so take them easy, take them hard. It's up to you. Ryan, the tagless Haynes. Most and, bizarre Haynes brief I've, that, that there's ever been. And Matt, hi, or Regan. Yeah, I hear you, and I definitely would take the shot on it because you'd be dumb not to. Coming to you from the heart of New England. Get ready to take some tips. Ooh, it's should. That's confetti, fireworks, flames, dubs. <laughs> Guys, we really missed it though. We could have been wearing what do we miss? t-shirts. We we are so underdressed right now. Oh, come on. And our colors, too. Would have been pretty sweet. Oh. Ooh. I'm having that made. Okay, take that down. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome in, takers, to Just the Tip Bay Fantasy Football Podcast. We are your tippers. Mac this Fat Bidge. That was IR Regan writing things down. The whole designer guy and everything graphic design that you see uh that's him that's him doing the work unless the shitty ones that's me and ryan the tagless haynes today (laughs) that's right oh man we'll get to that the real shitty ones are my work (laughs) yeah the one the pencil line (laughs) absolutely i just jack and regan's and try to Upload some pictures. That's all I do. What are you doing, Regan? <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we need to take that out of context there. Uh, and you are the takers. You are taking our tips and taking championships. We hope so. I hope you did this week. We got our, our pool going on on NFL.com. Fantasy, we'll talk about that. And you guys have been voting. We had our tippy nominees, and now we have the tippy awards to hand out left and right. Ooh, baby. Uh, Thank you very much from the bottom of our tips to Peltz, Hutch, Brody, Austin, JJ, Quan, Derek, Danny Boy, John, and many others. Thank you very much for voting. Even you guys voting, which I didn't think we were allowed to do. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, I didn't even vote on mine, which is the funniest thing. <laughs> and that I was, was like, the hilarious actually, thing. I'm like, <laughs> like, you voted for my nominee. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Regan. <laughs> I saw Regan voting, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to throw in my yeah, votes. Mine, I think I did, as well. I did vote for mine. You did, <laughs> so. and it uh, it came down to one vote between you and I, Ryan. Um, one of these awards that we'll get to. Uh, one of the awards. Uh, it's the Money Shot Award, which Mike Evans has been nominated for, for his performance championship week. Uh, luckily, he won't be here, and we won't be throwing him the awards, so there's no danger of him dropping it. Crickets. No, uh, there's more well of this done. to come, people, in this <laughs> award show, the tippies. So stick around. But first, uh, we are going to get into some little playoff recaps, a little bit of news, a little bit of hurt locker for those of you that are listening, that are in our pool. You might want to listen up to uh, Regan's update for the injuries there before we get to the tippies. Uh, but first, thank you, 
everybody who voted, so you already know this, but if you are new, follow us. Just a tip, FFP on everything. Uh, keep up to date uh, if you want some more of the stellar audio, some more reels, some more clips. We got some big plans in store. We still haven't met up for our wings yet to plan everything, but uh, Ryan's working on some stuff, brewing up some stuff, so some great tips coming for you, especially for you dynasty players out there, so please stick around for that uh, all That's season. Me now. It, it is you. You got to become an expert like uh, like Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I went from zero to three in mm-hmm. a year and a half. That's how you got to do it. Don't just dabble. Jump right in. Uh, it's a good time, though. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I won the Dynasty League this year. So, Oh, my just, God. Just like... <laughs> Grace, how long have you been listening to this for? Is this like an all-year thing? Matt, oh, how boy. many leagues did you win? Mm. Mm. How many leagues did you win this year? Oh, I won zero, but I, I'm talking about my no, whole okay. prediction. Right. How many did you win? Uh, I won one. Ah! Just missed it by one. I... <laughs> We have to have a bold prediction recap episode. We'll have that probably next month. Uh, it'll be a good time. But first, let's get down to some business for the takers here. A little bit of a little peek into Haynes here. Sweet, sassy, molassy. Get- yeah, boys, considering we're a New England-based podcast, I just wanted to touch base on, like, what what's happening in New England, what's happening in Fox. Mm. We got a lot of a lot of big names flying into town, sitting down with Bobby Kraft, sitting down with Coach oh. Bill, and uh, yeah, today it was Bill O'Brien. Tomorrow it's John Jefferson, former wide receiver for the Pats. Uh, I think ninety-one to ninety-nine, something like Ooh. that, so and I just uh, played it. <laughs> That's what I started watching, man. Packers, Patriots, Super Bowl. 97. I think I was like seven. That's what yeah. the first game I ever watched. And then I watched from there on out and played Madden on N64 all the time. That's it. That was the game, man. That was all, for, the, for Patriots fans, for, for people our age. That was it. But Desmond Howard really shit on us that game. So, mm. you know. Speaking of games, have you guys ever been to free play over in Providence? No. Some retro gaming bar. They got NFL Blitz and stuff. Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, I have that in my own basement. Yeah, but it's not set up though. Shout it's... out to Free Play. They got oh, not, not, not a sponsor, sponsor, but they got Free hundreds sponsor. of retro <laughs> games. It's really yeah. a lot of fun. Free anyway. Plug. Anyway, so <laughs> we got like Sean Sean Jefferson, Keenan McCardell, who's the uh wide receiver coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh he's yeah. gonna be interviewed as well. Adrian Clem, former offensive lineman for the New England Patriots. I saw that he was the first pick ever by Bill Belichick with the Patriots. So he's uh, he is uh ancient the offensive line coach, I believe. And he will, will have an interview for the job as well. So That's and then Nick Cayley, who's the who's in house tight end coach. Yeah. Uh it's gotta be Bill O'Brien, though. It, it, like Bill O'Brien's gonna get offered the job, and it's up to him whether or not he's gonna take it. That's that's how I feel about it. So he's working at Alabama right now, right? Now, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's where he is. Is currently wants recruiting to get rid of him, <laughs> which is so weird. So I'm like, all right, let's get the guy that no one wants. I don't know. I think this was the plan all along, though, to go get Bill. <clears throat> yeah, the Nick Haley thing doesn't make sense. Like you had him last year. Why didn't you do that? So I don't know. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Maybe, awesome. maybe maybe I mean, he when the offense started doing better maybe it was more his ideas than matt patricia so we'll see is there truth to that is there truth to Crim- the crimson tide not wanting bill o'brien back it's the fans the fans are kind of like butthurt yeah. about something yeah because they just went 10 and what 10 and three is the first time they've lost three games uh, <laughs> Three game. I don't know if they lost three or two. I can't remember, but it's either way. It's more than one, and that usually doesn't happen. So I think that's probably what it is. But at the same time, like the dude's been there for a while. He's been really successful. Hmm. He's really successful in the NFL as far as being an offensive coordinator. Even as a head head coach, he was a good head coach with the Texans. He was just a really shitty GM. I think you know, just He's, about everybody hmm. feels that way. Probably the most successful coach from the uh, Belichick tree, for sure. More yeah. playoff appearances, for sure. So Where's Charlie Weiss? 
That's what I wanted to know. He, up he, to does, nowadays? he does a radio show on Sirius Radio. What, does he? Mm-hmm. And a podcast too and stuff. So. From a recliner. <laughs> in there. She should. We should have him on. I'll invite him. I'll tweet at him. His Twitter? Oh, yes. <laughs> no, he might. He might do He's it. got it. I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I had a good joke, but now it slips my mind. So anything else on this stuff? No. But oh, Charlie Weiss is like 80, 82 years old. So I think uh, he probably has like a pager or something. That's what I'm saying. He still got it. <laughs> He's still he's still got it. He's still coherent. He's probably a better coach than offense coordinator than Matt Patricia, that's for sure. All right. Oh, I, yeah. uh, takers, if you have been in our group on FL.com, uh, some of you guys are, are killing it so far. Shoot. Somebody named Playoffs. What a jerk, whoever that is. <laughs> well, I love it. I love it. But okay. I don't know who, you're, who you are. Yeah, what's your name? Put your name there so we can give you a good shout out. And then Hendrix used to coach him, quarterback, great kid. Uh, he's killing it too. Yeah, and then Nicholas, he number three, 127 right now. Good for you. And Johnny, it's got to be Connolly, right? Nice job, man. Casperson rounding it out there, the top six. And Paul, I'm sorry, I was counting myself at the Paul's top, but I'm way at the bottom with four, 46 <laughs> points. So, uh, but I was playing more of the guys on the bye week, so I wanted those double Somebody points next likes week. The Eagles, mm-hmm. and Kansas City. It's oh, very early, man. man. A lot of things can change. A lot of things can change. I'm in second to last, so, <laughs> so yeah. Did you go bye week heavy too? Uh, did you go for the double points or no? You just picked I, players I, that I, suck. I got three on bye. I had three on bye. <laughs> All right. How about you, Ryan? I had a strategy, you jerk uh, face. I just had AJ Brown, just the one on, just the one on by. Oh, Are we okay. not saying who we have on by? Is yeah. that a thing? That's who I have this week. No, 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 no. It's fine. I'm just Doesn't curious strategy. Now. Like for for example, playoffs. His week, he spread it out. He had a player on like every single team, so that's why he had a boom mm-hmm. points. But then <clears throat> half your team won't have the double points next week. So I was just curious on different strategies and all. Uh. I'm going with teams right now, especially when there's only four more <laughs> four games this weekend and then two and then one. You're going with the teams that you think are going to make the championship to get that multiplier. Uh, so you don't have to tell me players you're doing that. Or are you still spreading out your eggs in more than just one basket there, Regan? I mean, eggs are expensive right now, so you might want to. They are, aren't they, dude? You're absurd. I live in Rehoboth. You used to be able to just get them on the yeah. side of the street. <sighs> well, you absurd, still can't. Yeah. My strategy, really, if that's what we're talking about right now, is I grabbed, you know, I want, I got Buffalo in the in the uh, Super Bowl. I just think it's just it's mm. inevitable. Um, Death. And then I grabbed yeah. the running yeah. backs in this scenario were horrible. Literally, absolutely. There's, other than Christian McCaffrey, I don't feel comfortable with mm-hmm. any other, you know, obviously Eckler, but I, I was I had a feeling they were going to lose. So he's already out. Like, yeah, it just, I was Smart. uncomfortable with Travis had... Etienne. I was like, eh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I had right. Eckler and he's probably up there. I got yeah. him in my lineup. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So I got, I grabbed Christian McCaffrey and Jarek McKinnon. And that's kind of like how I laid it out. And not that I think Kansas City is definitely going to win because I thought Buffalo was, but I rather have that better strategy play for that position. Like I know I'll probably win out on that position. Mm -hmm. That's really what I went with. And you look at the brackets too and like, all right, at least when one of them will be eliminated, it will be in the AFC championship McKinnon or a Buffalo Mm -hmm. running back. If you're doing cook or Singletary, but yeah, I also got Kelsey uh, on my team. Like all of you should, because it's pointless to play any other tight end. But if you played Knox, uh, that would have been good. <laughs> and then yeah, if he's he going to get zero off, points geez, next week. Zero probably. times two is zero. <laughs> so it's still zero. I was I'm told there saying. would be no math. Uh, I know simple math. <laughs> Ryan, you got anything to add to this? I don't, not much. I mean, right now I have a situation where I have Devin Singletary and I'm like, do I pivot? Do I pivot to like a Jarek McKinnon? But I'm in the same boat. Like, I'm, Riding with Buffalo, and that's my strategy. I pick my two Super Bowl winners. I pick mm-hmm. the players from those teams. 
you know, with like mm-hmm. AJ Brown thrown in there. And uh, yeah, so I'm going Buffalo San Fran, which is Chris, Chris Berman's been saying that for like 35 years, that that's going to be the Super Bowl. So maybe even longer. I really hope it happens before that man dies. That's for sure. Oh, Give him one. That'd be great. Give him one. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that Super Bowl matchup at all. That's fine. Uh, it got some exciting games though this weekend. So oh, we'll yeah. get to our it's predictions at the, the f- end of the episode. Oh. What, what Regan? You, you stress? No, I, no, the only thing I want to say is so I've been doing this playoff challenge for probably like five years. And, um, mm. every single year, there's always like a, at least a stud, like one team, you know, is getting in. Sometimes there's two. When it was the Patriots, you had just picked all Patriots. So like it's just it's rough this time. Like I feel like there's no direct path. Mm. Just saying. No, it's gonna be fun. I love no. it. No, that's why. I, that's why I wanted to double the multiplier. That's why I t- picked a lot of guy on bye weeks. And I was like, like I don't know who's gonna advance. So I stupidly picked Eckler and Fournette because their percentages were lower. I should have gone McCaffrey, man. Just like everybody else. Dumb that's move by me. Last. Hey, I went with him, and I'm still second to last. I have double your points, though. Long game. (laughs) Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, But we'll get into our game predictions at the end of this episode, after the awards and stuff. Uh, If you guys got any questions, you can hit us up. Just a tip, FFP. Not like you really need our help. Uh, You takers know what you're doing. You see Regan and I, (laughs) last place. So why ask? (laughs) Yes. but we have a little bit of an injury update, and then we'll recap a little bit of the playoffs this weekend. So, the hurt ah! There you go, Regan. Wow. Oh, just had, I was about to send a text message and everything. All right, the one time I wanted him to take long. All right, we're in the hurt locker. That's it's, obviously, it's obviously a, a very small locker, one of those narrow, narrow ones from like, you know, actually, Mac, you wouldn't know. Um, we'll talk about it later then. Just a small locker, okay? Yeah, it's metal, a little lock on it. Anyways. Like a lunchbox, <laughs> I was going to say, but never mind. No, go ahead. John Jennings, uh, San Fran, the third wide receiver for the San Fran. Uh, ankle injury, minor ankle injury. He plans on playing through it like he did last week. Two for five last week for 41 yards. Something random. I'm really just throwing this in there because uh, I don't think he's like a good DFS play um, because he's not going to be 100%, but he's, he is going to play. Michael Hardman. Uh, pelvis injury still uh, will not play for the Chiefs this week. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire. Uh, so this came out. He will not be elevated off IR and is not expected to play this week. Ah, okay. So, you know, we're good to know. Yep. Ronald, Ronald Jones, baby. Let's go. I hate that guy. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Isaiah McKenzie says he is about 90%. He said he was around 90% last week. He was a play. They played him. So he's good to go. He said he is playing this week. Jameson Crowder came out today recovering from a fractured ankle. It's the up in the air if he is going to play, but supposedly he's at the practice facility practicing. Uh, It is what it is. They grabbed Cole Beasley, so I would expect him to have no relevance whatsoever, but I'm just saying he's there. And Jamal Agnew, shoulder injury, played through it last week and plans on doing the same this week. Um, and lastly, to bring it up, it's supposedly Jimmy Garoppolo is just about good to go. How Ooh. unusual. He's about good to go. Um, mm-hmm. Coaches came out saying, though, that he will be the second string quarterback. Going All right, the good. They put that to rest real quick. Yep. Good. Done. I was like, oh, you need a new contract and you're healthy. How unusual. <laughs> so- <laughs> oh, yeah. that's ridiculous, that guy. Yeah. Yeah, he'll land somewhere, but oh. uh, hope, hopefully not in Miami. I don't want that. Uh, all right, <laughs> nobody else, nobody else in the hurt locker. We're good. No, we're golden. Move on. My back. What do you mean by that? You broke back is broken. <laughs> what point? All right, uh, the fool around. We- we got business to get to a uh, little bit to touch on from this past weekend, guys. Uh, our predictions were OK uh, for the most part. I pivoted on Facebook, though. I thought I Miami was going to be able to pull that out. Oh, man. And then uh, 
I did say the Giants would win on air here, but uh, that was that was I don't know. It was a great game. I'm tired of hearing super wild card weekend. Just call it wild card weekend, man. Because when you go, you add another team to the playoffs in like three more years. When you add in the UK as another division, like it's gonna be so annoying. Don't please don't stop calling it super wild card weekend. Little little leftover rant for me uh but yeah miami they should that is something that would bother should. you mac that is yep. something yeah, it's just it's just something that miami they i feel like i have to address this bad clock management a lot of people in miami fire mcdaniel blah 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 blah, blah. like it's his first year it's hard to be a head coach and call the plays like andy reed does and andy reed has messed up play clock and play calls all the time and he's still a great coach that anybody would take on their team. It's the first year. Relax. It's still a great game. I mean, the refs didn't really have to help Buffalo out that much, man. Come on. No holding calls at all? Come on. <laughs> but it's not their I fault. Mean, Miami the lost fact that, that the Dolphins were in the game is reason enough to hold on to Mike McDaniel. Yeah. I mean, how you got Skylar Thompson against the Buffalo Bills, the mm-hmm. number two seed, who probably mm-hmm. should have been the number one seed. It's no Probably. Mike McDaniel is clearly the guy. He's clearly the guy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And it's just drop balls too. Waddle. What the hell, man? Oh, that was so frustrating. <laughs> Two drop balls. Was on his hands. Hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, any games you guys want to reflect on this weekend? The only one I want to say is I'm in a pick them league as well. And uh, as you do with points and stuff like that. And uh, I, 100% positive I picked Jacksonville in Dallas. I went on there and Dallas was correct and Jacksonville was not. So I would have been, I would have got, I did pick Minnesota, but I only used, uh, you use a points uh, system uh, one through 13. You can only can use each one once. And those are the points you get. I used a three for that game. So I would have lost, I lost three points. Oh, okay. But Jacksonville, I picked Jacksonville and it didn't register. I'm pretty butthurt about it. I would have been looking pretty. Yeah, I would be. I turned off the game. I was like, oh, it's over. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I uh, was pathetic. Was was one, I played a uh, captain's mode on on DFS. And Mm -hmm. uh, I was one switch away from a big win. A big win. I I played, uh, help me out, kicker for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Ryan, suck up. Suck up. So I played suck up. Who didn't get any points, right? <laughs> and all I had to do was switch suck up and Dallas defense, which is the same theory, oh, right? Wow. Like I'm like, oh, Dallas yeah. is going to stop yeah. them. They're going to kick yeah. a shit ton of field goals. Like they... mm-hmm. So if I just made that switch, it would have been like a $900 payday. <laughs> yeah, woof. I mean, why would you play Dallas defense? It's not like Tom Brady throws picks in the red zone at all. No, no, no pick sixes from him but either. They, jin- they they jinxed him. He threw a pick in the red zone, if you guys didn't know. Right. He was trying to throw it away. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, should he retire? I can't wait to go through that all off season. Aaron, we're not going to bring that up now. Rodgers and him. No, we're not. We're not going to bring it up ever. We're done. Oh, I will. Uh, Don't we have something to get just to right impress- now? I, I, I was going to say impressive by Brock Purdy. As well, I did not see that coming. I wish I started him as my quarterback. Yeah. And like 35 points on the day. It was nice. Talking a little fantasy here, Ryan. I'm sorry, but we will get to the Tippy Awards. There was literally tens and tens of votes that you guys did on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, and Facebook. So we appreciate you guys uh, doing that. But uh, let's get to the Tippies. What a year it's been, guys. The 2022 season of fantasy football. Uh, running backs were disappointing. Wide receivers, the zero RB strategy really helped you out uh, in the long run. Uh, speaking of running backs in the playoff games, uh, playoff Lenny 
It's more like going to be laid off, Lenny, right? After that <laughs> performance. Mm, uh, three, uh, three year contract, probably not. <laughs> mm, Rashad yeah, White. Okay. Buy him in mm. Dynasty. Mm. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, a very exciting season. We got more awards to give out, or all the awards to get out. We haven't even started, but uh, <laughs> this season, Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, like Regan predicted, full strategy. Top five running backs. Uh, they lasted the whole season. First time they did that in like three years. Uh, Ever. <laughs> yeah. People that didn't last all season. Nathaniel Hackett, Matt Rule, Zappy Fever, oh. and my nights with your moms. <laughs> Two pump chump. <laughs> These jokes are there not landing. All right. We'll continue on with the awards. Uh, speaking of chump. What's our first award here, Regan? Uh, one pump chump. The yeah, guy that okay. exploded once this season, good for one start. Let's get into it. Deion Jackson was our first one. Week six versus Jacksonville, RB1 on the week. Uh, what, a lot of points. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just get into that. Uh, the, the next nominee, Traylon Burks, finally. Uh, week 11, he had a decent game, 7-8. and eight. Uh, 111 yards. Great week. Uh, you know, Benjamin, week seven, our third nominee, 92 yards on the ground, uh, one touchdown, four receptions, around 23 fantasy points. Very unexpected. Great turnout. Uh, with 70% of the votes, the winner is. Dion Jackson. Uh, <laughs> I agree. 100%. And he was. Yeah. There. A lot of a lot of people voted for him, uh, Deion Jackson. So, uh, in Dynasty, trade him to the Jonathan Taylor owner for like a third round pick. Here, here's your handcuff <laughs> or a third wide receiver, something like that. Because uh, Jonathan one. Taylor, he's people are gonna be like, oh, will he get injured again? So, uh, we'll we'll see. A little little tip for you. That's what I would do. Uh, next award here. Uh, Ryan, would you like to take this one? Oh, yes. The one night stand. A few very impactful starts. And your nominees are Kenyon Drake, week six, week eight, week nine. Samaj P. Ryan, week three, 11, 12, and 13. And Mike White, week 12, 13, and nine. Wait a second. That's here. it. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the points. Too many numbers here. There's too <laughs> we'll many edit numbers. That edit that out. And the winner, and I did not write this by just a tiny tip. <laughs> Mike White. Wow. Uh, Good F for Mike you. White. Forget Aww. Mike White. The guy almost cost yeah. me two championships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next he next year. Back. He will. He will next year. And, of course, people are going to be like, oh, you got to start him. You got to start him. You can start him that one week. That's it. Yeah. Forget it. After that, nope. Two weeks. 12 and 13. <sighs> you feel like anybody got gypped here or that's it? Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, <laughs> anybody who, who had three or more weeks – who actually met the definition of the award got chipped. Oh. <laughs> Who nominated <laughs> Mike White? <laughs> I mean, one night stand. It should just be one week, but all right. Just somebody that you used and had no attachment to. That's what it is. That's what we mean by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Technicality. Asterisk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. We're still a work in progress takers. Give us a break. <laughs> Uh, damn it! I have to scroll all the way down for these. I'll do the next one. Drops, yeah. If you would like to, uh, the ain't working with much, but boy, did they get the job done. Award felt gross starting them, especially at the beginning. Maybe, maybe at the end, but they gave you everything they had. Let's get into it, guys. First nominee is Geno Smith. Came into the season didn't look like crap and finished the QB five. Latavius mm. Murray. Double digits, week 9, 13. Not too shabby. Oh, and week 15. 
Uh, Deontay Johnson, this is a good one too. Wide receiver 30. Uh, did not get in the end zone whatsoever, but surprisingly, <laughs> surprisingly he had double-digit points pretty much every week. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a rough one. But by a landslide, the winner is... Geno Smith. Yeah, that one makes sense. That, that yeah. one makes sense. Undrafted, nobody gave him a chance. And in turn, people faded DK Metcalf and Lockett. Lockett oh, was yeah. like a double round, double digit round uh, draft pick. Yep. And, you know, shout out to those guys. And Gino. Gino, your award for ain't working yeah. with much. It's a very, very little. Very little trophy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next one here, I feel like I should do the honors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, if Regan, you could get the next video up ready. Uh, Zach Wilson Award. Uh, it's the one guy you were set on this season uh, who ended up being the worst pick of the season. Uh, this one came down close, guys, but the nominees are Cortland Sutton. Uh, he drafted him in the third and fifth rounds, and he didn't have a top 12 finish all season in the wide receiver category. Jarvis Landry, 11 games, only double-digit score twice all season. And Michael Pittman, everybody hyped him up this season, and he just let you down. Two good games, maybe. But you took him way too early. Do you have a habit of going too early, Regan? That's why I have two kids. <laughs> and the winner is... <laughs> and the winner is... Who's laughing? That was Mac. What was that? <laughs> I added a laugh sound effect, and that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> Doing it on the fly. Whoa. One vote. That guy sounded like he was oh, hurting. Cortland, Sutton, he was laughing and he was in pain because he picked those guys. But Cortland Sutton is the winner for the Zach Wilson Award. Uh, not one that you want, Sutton. So we'll, we'll keep that keep that from yeah. you. Uh, Ryan, you got the next one. The next award is the Mr. Pfizer. A little soft at first, but became hard when it mattered. And your nominees are Jarek McKinnon. From week nine on, he had double digits in all but two weeks. Keenan Allen, 420-plus games, 615-plus games over the last eight weeks of the season. And Tyler Algier, scratched the first game, double digit to five points. What's happening with this write-up? <laughs> then playoffs, <laughs> average 17 and a half points, no lower than running back 12 finishes. This is a tough one. This is my translation. Scratch writing. All right. You want to take that over again? You can. By more than a tip. And then some. The winner. (laughs) My nominees keep winning. Writing. The notes in the terminal airport in Jamaica. I'm sorry. I did not redo my notes. Scratch notes. You got to figure out how to use commas and <laughs> periods, dude. I you can't know what? It... Talk. I use bulletin so you guys don't get confused. Bulletin notes. Uh, hopefully, takers didn't tune out yet. Jarek McKinnon. Because we got a couple he's, more and it gets He's to a clear winner. Too. He's a clear winner. He has to. He has to. Uh, Nobody saw it coming. Him. Everybody was like wondering, hey, it's going to be CH. Oh, he started out hot. And then, oh, the rookie's coming up. No, nope, it's going to be the old guy. What is he, 31 years old? Lighting it up. Killing Some it. boom uh, plays. So. My buddy that's a, K- a Kansas City uh, fan. And this, I think his brother works for them. I don't know what he does for them in general. But he was like, Jerry McKinnon's the guy to have. Screw Pacheco. He's like, McKinnon is where it's really? at. And I, I picked him up that week that he came over. Uh, to tell and told me that, and I was like, Doop. and then I, I was like, hey, This is amazing. So, it worked out. Did I not share that with the takers? Jeez, uh, yeah, the inside source. Oh, well, I didn't share. know. Well, now I know it's legit. 
the source. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Anthony. Sure, you got to vet those sources for sure. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, Anthony. Sorry. Uh, reading was selfish and didn't share it. Uh, the next award, the ED, the bust. High potential, but just could never get it going. Your nominees are Kyle Pitts, drafted in the third round. Consensus number three, tight end. Gabe Davis, wide receiver 32. Remember all the hype in the preseason? Somebody here would hype him. Yeah, you were leading that hype that. train. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> you were leading it the year before. <laughs> uh, conductor. I didn't. I didn't lead it. I just I jumped on early. You put it together. <laughs> uh, and Jonathan Taylor drafted number one overall consensus number one pick uh, finishes RB thirty three. Even taking out his hurt games, uh, twelve PPR points per game. Not what you want from your number one pick. I think we all had a chance. And to the grab winner Jonathan is Taylor, and we didn't. Sleeps. What are these? <laughs> I think those are swears, supposedly. Yeah, you're like son of a fuck, bitch. <laughs> and now I'm swearing, and I'm bleeping myself. No, the, you got like, the, the beeps. Come on, the beep. yes, <laughs> you missed out on that one. Uh, guy puts the slide uh, together and still messes up. You gotta love him. Uh, all right, you guys can do it next time. All no, right, guys. Fantastic one. work. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead, uh, we'll yeah. Back to the last Regan. one afterwards. No, no, you can do the last one. I don't want to mess it no, up. No, you did all. You did all. You did all well, work. I'm gonna take and this one. So it. both of you zip you it. Could, you no. go. You go. Money shot. Player who had a boom week like no other. Mike Evans championship week. Holy crap! Ten for 207, three touchdowns, 48 points, and some other notes. That macro TJ Hawkinson 13 catches on 16 targets, 109 yards, two touchdowns in week 16 versus the Giants. Uh, Ooh. amazing. Mac was not happy about that and still isn't. Week uh, 17, our last nominee, Austin Eckler, third place. Oh, this is my this is my notes. Third place to get me some money back. <laughs> Thank you. 122 yards, two touchdowns, four catches for another 39. An amazing day for Austin Eckler, the hero in the championship week. The winner is. Wow. Hate to say it, but you gave it away in the <laughs> in the uh, write up. Well, oh, well, championship I mean, I, week. I mean, Evans Hawkinson was wasn't championship week. He was semis. He was semis. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's why we, he didn't win. You see a masterpiece, you know it's gonna win best picture or best actor rather. Well, not an actor. Well, he's like the money shot. So, oh, you said best piece. Forrest uh, Gump, <laughs> a masterpiece. You know what I mean? I guess not. <laughs> Maybe you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the piece that's it. anyway. Uh, and MVP of the season, the Hard Rock Cafe, hard all season long. We got Austin Eckler, six overall in scoring, number one running back on the year. See how easy that is to read. A.J. Brown, <laughs> you got him in the third round. And he just scored points with an average of 18 PPR points per game. Wide receiver five on the season. Christian McCaffrey, 1,880 all-purpose yards. 13 touchdowns, 85 receptions, and only one fumble on the year. Number two running back on the season. Oh. And the winner is... Austin Eckler! <laughs> Should not be a surprise. That man deserves it. I don't want to see him get snubbed anymore. I don't want people saying he's injury prone. I don't care that he's old. He's a passing down back. Uh, they're not rushing up in the gut with him and getting him beat up. Get him out in space. Will he be the number one running back next year as well? 
Those guitars Probably. sounded a lot like a flute and a trumpet. Just gonna throw it out there. They were fireworks. What the hell? What dude? bands <laughs> do you know? Regan, Regan did this and went oh. doo doo doo. <laughs> <laughs> this is the band sure if he was playing the guitar or the flute said, or what he was doing. I did not make that sound. This is the banjo. He's he's from Rehoboth. Back. He made that sound. He, he made did. The sound. We'll, we'll play the tape. <laughs> Everyone will hear it, so we'll find <laughs> out. Vote on it at justthetip.com. Uh -huh. <laughs> not dot com. What, 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 what instrument? <laughs> Uh, takers, thank you very much for voting. We can't thank you enough for the support that we've had this year, supporting our tips up nice and high for everybody to see, sharing our our content uh, and participating, and just uh, just taking them all season long. What's so funny, Regan? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, no idea. We appreciate you, takers, and uh. I appreciate you tippers with me, Ryan and Regan. Been a fun season. Um, who's the best rookie of the year, though? Uh, I just want to do that right question. now. We didn't really do a nominee. Uh, it's just I just want to reflect on a bit. You know, Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson, both thousand yard receiving yards mm -hmm. uh, on the season. Poor running backs uh, got snubbed. <sighs> Yeah, uh, Kenneth Walker, please. He had, yeah, maybe he had it. He was on pace. So just oh, yeah. Like nuclear. Damian Pierce was up there, too, for a little while. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is Brock Purdy in that in that conversation? Uh, dude, too late, he right? should be. Kyle Shanahan should be coach of the year, and he should be rookie of the year as the last pick in the draft, and you come, come in and – Especially coach of the year, ten games, eleven games in a row now. If they if they don't take playoffs into account, but and I'm not the biggest 49er fan, so don't think that. I just it's impressive what they're doing. And people are picking apart Purdy's game and like how he's getting lucky and stuff. It's like it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. Getting lucky. That's it's yeah. it's impressive though to be third string, last pick in the draft. Oh yeah, it's I don't know. it's impressive to me. He did have like a record or whatever for the most almost interceptions. <laughs> it was like nine almost turnover plays. <laughs> I was like, geez, but they didn't happen. Isn't that I wild? Know. And then and then know. Josh Allen is leading the league in turnovers, but he was in yep. the MVP conversation. So get bent, Regan. No, I'm so oh, fancy. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rough. It came from the truth, though. <laughs> Some sort of truth. Oh, no. Man. Uh, I feel like uh, compared to seasons past where you had Justin Jefferson in 2020 and then you had Jamar Chase in 21, these are not rookies that, that kind of are on that upper don't jump out of the yet. play. Uh, jump out of no. the page. Yeah. No. Nope. So I'd say uh, Garrett Wilson would be mine. That's kind of who I'm leaning to. In the NFL, it's probably going to be Sauce Gardner. Uh, something like that. Oh That's yeah, it might. Yeah, defense. But for, would, would but, for fan, but for fantasy, I think I would give it to Garrett Wilson. I yep. think uh, it would have been Brees Hall if he stuck around. Unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, all right. Anything else you guys want to reflect on as we close out tonight? Uh, the games this week. Let's we will. We're it. gonna. We're gonna get into. It. <laughs> I just said I meant I, four players, but. No, we're good. I, I, yeah. uh, we're, uh, we're gonna <laughs> tell us more. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. I thought it was funny. <laughs> it was. Anyways, um, no. Uh, a lot of these guys that we're talking about and stuff like that. A lot of data is gonna be finally put together, and we're gonna start reflecting on these guys. And we might have some different answers to some of these awards. This is what we, you know, what comes to mind right now. Who made the best impression or worst impression? But uh, I'm excited to, you know, going forward and especially Dynasty paying attention to these uh, younger guys and a lot of these other guys that we talked about today, will they produce just like this next year? Who knows? So this mm -hmm. is exciting. And I really want to start like looking into the numbers itself. For sure. Uh, just to see like when they started going off and 
like Tyler Algier, like he picked it up in the playoffs, but he wasn't much use before then. So nope. Gordon uh, Patterson got hurt and it all started. Yeah. Uh interesting stuff to check out. We're gonna look into it. If you takers have any suggestions of things you want us to discuss, let us know. Just a tip, FFP. All right, let us get into our playoff predictions. Perhaps play a little game called just a tip. Just for a second, just to see how it feels. I'm in. We had a perfect week last week, guys. And we got every game right. So that's why you want to listen to us, takers. Bet all bet your mortgage on it. Um nope. <laughs> I definitely nope, did yeah. not get every game right. Yeah, but, you know. We did not. I was gonna well, say we had, oh we did have all the same games though. That's right. I switched to the Giants. I pretty sure I switched mine to Jacksonville on here. Could be wrong. Mm, I don't think liar. I'll go back and listen. I'm pretty good at the lying. <laughs> I think that's all right. Game. First game. What do we got, Regan? Whoa. Uh Saturday, four thirty. Start the weekend off right. Little Jacksonville, Kansas City, Kansas City mm. coming off the bye. Jacksonville coming off a huge win versus the Chargers. Boys, who do you got? I'm rolling with Kansas City, of course. Yeah, Kansas City favored by eight and a half. I'm going to go uh, 45 to 29, Kansas City. I Ooh. think they're going to absolutely smoke them. Uh, yeah, I get 20, my belief. 38 17. In the last, oh God, what is it? Last six seasons, five seasons, it's been Kansas City or Jacksonville in the AFC Championship. So. <laughs> other than the Patriots, but uh, dominant, dominant two teams here. <laughs> dominant Jaguars. <laughs> they had that one time with Bortles. It was hilarious. Anyway, Ryan, how about you? They should have won that game. I got uh, KC over Jacksonville, 31-19. Oh, we all oh, have wow. them covering the spread, too. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're, yeah, I think they're going to cover the spread. Uh, Saturday night game, Giants at Philly. This one Ooh, I'm baby. looking forward to. Uh, over under 48 and Philly favored by seven and a half. Regan, who are you going with? Oh, I got Philly over the Giants by at least 10, 27, 17. Um, mm. I think the Giants' luck is going to run out. It's all on Saquon Barkley's back for the most part, I think, hey. in this game. Put some respect on Danny Dimes throwing all over the place. Oh, no, he's going to be running all over the place because he's going to have to run this ball himself. There, He ran so many times last week. I forget the number, but it was planned plays. I couldn't believe how many times he ran. So it's going to be a run game versus this Phillies defense. Uh, I don't think he's going to get the ball out much. They do get a lot of sacks, so their defensive front's good in the pass rush. So uh, it'll be interesting. I'm going with Philly. Uh, 30 to 17 as well. I just don't think they're going to be able to score as much as they did because Danny Dimes, yeah, he does great against the Vikings, but I don't think he will against Philly. Mac Jones. I'm going G men, boys. Oh, wow. Upset City 26 23. There we go. Mm -hmm. What a loser. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have have anything to support that claim. Close game. Yeah, Ivins looks good. No, I like it. It's... It could it could be a trap game. Who knows? Uh, Boston Scott, DFS play. He always gets a touchdown against them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. Unless he's like wicked no, cheap and like showdown yeah. captain. It's a $200 play. Yeah, Boston Scott. Uh, next game, Cincinnati at Buffalo. 49 Sunday. over under. Does this seem low to you guys? 3 o'clock game on Sunday. Yeah, 49 That's... over under. Mm. Seems low. Weather? Is it weather? They're in Buffalo, right? Uh, 35 degrees, and it has a snowflake. So, might be a little bit of snow. Snowflake? I was like, just one? I think they'll be just good. <laughs> they just want snowflake, so it's not a <laughs> snow shower. Oh, God. Uh, I'm going uh, Buffalo 28, Cincinnati 23. I have just barely Buffalo hit winning over Cincinnati. Uh, this is going to be – everyone's going to be talking about this game all week, all weekend. I got yep. Buffalo 31, Cincy 28. It's going to be decided by a field goal. It's going to be a close game all the way to the end. Um, mm. and it's going to be a tough game for both these teams. They both have a lot to prove to each other. Since he's got to prove that they could have won that game 
that snubbed them into this situation where they could have been, you know, they could have had the game at their own house. So, mm-hmm. ouch. I mean, out of control. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. You both have them covering right. the spread, but I have a wider margin. I got Buffalo over Cincy 38 26. Ah. I looked at that quick. I thought I said 36. I was like, no, you don't. (laughs) All right. Wow. Buffalo scoring some points. I like it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Gabe Davis. (laughs) That was three three touchdowns. He had a big game last week, dude. Played him in a lot of lineups. He Mm -hmm. did me well. He did. Uh, I will never play him again. And the next game, three. Last game. I just had to update it because I had a typo. Games at 6.30. So we have two games, uh, 3 o'clock and 6.30. I kind of like those times on Sunday. Dallas at San Fran. Um, San Fran on the bye last week. Uh, that's not true. No. It's not true. It's not true at all. They really had the bye. <laughs> yeah, I was like, they the played and, <laughs> and they beat. Anyways. Um I have Dallas over San Fran, 24 to 20. Dallas has a great defense. Uh, they are going to make Purdy uh, a sore player because he's going to get sacked a lot um, or at least rushed a lot. So I really think this is going to be a defensive game. San, San Fran's defense is a nasty as well. Uh, Dallas will not be putting up numbers like they did versus Tampa Bay. Uh, but I don't think Purdy's going to be able to handle it, the pressure. Ryan, what do you got? Ooh, I have San Fran over Dallas, 27-26. Dallas covers, San Fran wins. Mm. I think think a mayor misses the extra point to tie the game. They sign another kicker to the practice squad, so. I thought they cut the other player. Oh, I'm not true. They're juggling. I don't think the, I don't knows. think they have. He's going to make all of his field goals, and then it's going to the, the Cowboys are going to score to tie the game with like thirty seconds left, and he's going to miss the extra point. That'd be great. That'd be That'd great. Be yeah, I just I don't trust the coaching uh, McCarthy in a big game, so I'm going San Fran, uh, twenty-seven to twenty-four hmm, by a field so, goal. By a field goal. Uh, so we all yeah. have it close, though. Yeah, oh, four yeah. points. This is the game of the week for me. Not for fantasy scoring points and stuff, but just entertainment. The these classic teams clashing. Uh, it's gonna be great. I'm excited for about the first quarter of the Jacksonville Kansas City game, <laughs> and then I'm excited for all the other games. All the games are gonna be awesome. It's like last week when Seattle was close with San Fran, then they just got the doors blown off. I just I feel like Dallas, they might hang a little bit, and then a garbage time touchdown to keep it close. I just don't, I don't see Dallas going into San Fran to win. We'll see though. Hey, It'll be just fun. Got a feeling. <laughs> I got a feeling. If you had that drop, that would have been amazing. Oh, I got it here. <laughs> Start singing? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. You have to like when there's a guy coming right in your face and he just sits in there uh, and delivers it uh, really well. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, takers, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we're going to get to our leftovers. But um, thank you very much for all your support all year. Um, I think we'll jump on maybe pretty quickly just to talk about playoffs and AFC matchups, but what happened? My leftovers. Uh Celtics came back to beat the Warriors in overtime. (laughs) And the Bruins went again as usual. (laughs) I wasn't even going to question it. We already knew that. Bergeron got hit in the face with the puck last game. Mm -hmm. It was questionable play. Comes in, scores a goal. Guy's a legend. Don't even have to watch the games anymore. You just assume they win. Oh, mm-hmm. man, I'm going to a game. Uh, See you in the playoffs. 18th. So I'm excited. Ooh, nice. Uh, that's great. It was expensive. <laughs> Got anything for the leftovers there, Ryan? Uh, no, Regan just stole two good ones. And mm, uh, re-watching Ted Lasso because 
Why not? Because you got yeah. time like that. Sure. Why not? <laughs> got a lot of time. Uh, everybody's talking about it. Last Last of Us on HBO. Awesome show. Uh, awesome video game. I don't know if you guys ever played it. It looks wild. And is that... I don't want to give it away, but the certain thing that happens to the people is actually based on a real thing. Did you know that? Based so like, on a true story? No. <laughs> no, no, not a true story. The actual something that happens to the people is a real thing that can happen, but not to people yet. Uh, in theory. It, it, yeah. No, in real it life. It opens up. Yeah, it opens up about it, talking about how it does it to ants and stuff and how it's a fear uh, that it can happen to humans. And that's the whole video game base. Like, it's not much of a spoiler. Just oh, good. how a fungus Fucking attacks scary. the brain. <laughs> It's it is it is it's gonna be better than The Walking Dead. Um, it's from the writers of Chernobyl. So I, I saw this coming out like two years ago, and I was like, I can't wait for this. And yeah, first premiere episode, highly recommend. Cool, buddy. Enjoy. That's what she said. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs>